Good afternoon. Got a really quick bulletin for you here on The Angry Astronaut, a mission that some of you may have missed back on January 31st, 2024, when Rocket Lab returned to flight in 2024 after a mishap that took place last year. Yeah, they've actually had some other missions since then, but this is the first launch of 2024 for Rocket Lab, and boy, it was a big one. This was called Four of a Kind. Rocket Lab deployed four space situational awareness satellites for Spire Global. Now, some folks ask me, why have I chosen to live in Europe? What's really important about what they're doing here? Well, Spire Global is headquartered in Glasgow, Scotland, and they built these satellites for a company called North Star Earth and Space. And the reason they did is to provide space situational awareness. What is that? mean? Well, they are the first satellites to simultaneously monitor all near-Earth orbits from space, delivering an enhanced level of SSA, or Space Situational Awareness Services, to the global satellite community, with timely and precise information for space object detection, tracking, orbit determination, collision avoidance, that's a big one, navigation, and proximity alerts. In addition to that, Rocket Lab carried out an oceanic recovery of the booster, hopefully to reuse it again sometime in the future. So what was so important about this particular mission? Well, you need to have good situational awareness in space right now because of just how much dangerous garbage there is up there at the moment. And it becomes more and more complicated all the time every time Elon Musk, or anybody else for that matter, sends more satellites up to LA. And of course, Elon is doing that more than just about anybody because he wants to build the largest constellation in history. Well, he's already built the largest constellation in history with Starlink, and it's just going to get more complicated as time goes on. Now, active satellites are generally not that much of a risk because they're capable of performing collision avoidance maneuvers on their own. However, with space junk around, a lot of times they may not be able to avoid this unless they know where the space junk is and when any sort of collision is imminent. And that's what these satellites are designed to do, and this is an initiative being spearheaded right here in the UK. By the way, I am conducting my fifth interview with the UK Space Agency this week, and I'm looking forward to bringing you a lot of new stuff that's happening right here in Europe. Meanwhile, at the Stennis Test Center back in the United States, the RS-25 engines are nearly through their test process. The 6 of 12 tests was carried out on January 29th, and the engines were fired for 500 seconds, or 8.5 minutes. This test allowed the engines to go beyond their normal operational power, adding a margin of safety for future launches. So what's new? What's exciting about the RS-25s? Well, again, this is something that makes me very angry because apparently the manufacturing techniques have been enhanced, the materials being used are supposedly less expensive, and keep in mind, these engines are not going to be reusable, which should cut their price tremendously. But, unsurprisingly, the cost hasn't gone down at all. If anything, it's gone way up. We're looking at $146 million per engine under the current contract. And by the way, this is a cost plus contract, so it's very possible that the price could go up from there. Compare that to the few million dollars, maybe three or four million dollars or so, that SpaceX spends on every Raptor. And by the way, Raptor capabilities are very similar to the RS-25 in terms of thrust, in terms of ISP. Well, okay, the RS-25s may have an edge as far as ISP is concerned, but for all practical purposes, the Raptors have the same capabilities as the RS-25. Oh, except for the fact 
fact that they're reusable compared to these new ones from Aerojet Rocketdyne. And the other difference is they cost about 50 times less. I don't see how we're going to get back to the moon to stay if we have to pay these kinds of prices for engines that we've been using for almost half a century. And the final piece of space news that really didn't make headlines too much comes from Spaceport America, where this extremely exuberant young lady got an opportunity to head to space. Her name is Lina Borojidna, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Ukraine, although I guess she lives in Nevada these days. But she was the first Ukrainian woman to ever go to space, and she was accompanied by a Texan, a Californian, and an Austrian on the 11th successful space flight from Virgin Galactic. And the reason I'm angry about this one is the fact that now that Virgin Galactic finally seems to be getting their feet underneath them, now that their launches are going off on a regular cadence, and now that they're actually filling up their seats because this was the first private mission that actually had all four seats occupied. And of course, there was an Italian mission that did this too, but that was a military mission, not a private mission. In any event, they're going to start shutting these missions down. This vehicle is going to be retired and they're going to be upgrading to a new type of spacecraft. That's right, the VSS Unity will fly again in the second quarter of this year, and then maybe another flight in mid-2024, and then the Unity will be retired, and the company will shift its resources into what's called the Delta Class Vehicle. However, this vehicle is in development. Their first tests are probably not going to happen until 2025, with commercial service starting in 2026. Yeah, we've heard that one before when we're talking about new spacecraft from Virgin Galactic. I don't understand. Why not at least continue doing a few token flights with Unity, especially for all these customers who have paid good money and have been waiting, in some cases, decades for their chance to go to space? Why not just keep flying this ship and carry at least some passengers up to space while we're waiting for these new Delta class vehicles? Well, the answer most probably is money. Virgin Galactic is bleeding out cash like crazy while it continues to fly the Unity. The Delta class is apparently going to be a lot less expensive to operate and is going to be capable of launching every single week. And if they have several of these Delta class ships, they could be launching every couple of days, which would really improve the cash flow for the company. But that's years in the future and who knows what's going to happen between now and then i would like to thank marco harvey dent and rick la violette my three most recent patreon supporters who have signed up in february what you guys are doing is so important to the success of my channel and my ability to continue putting this content out and most importantly to try to cover these events on the spot and where these launches are taking place and by the way the next launch that i intend to go to is oft3 hopefully later this month thanks everybody for watching please like please subscribe and as always stay angry about space <laughs>